This week's games for the NFL are over, and let's go over them. Every week I start with my own team, and we have to start up with the Dallas Cowboys, and this was a crazy game. We won against the Steelers 20-17, but there is so much to unpack. For starters, this game didn't start until 9.45 Eastern Time because of a lightning delay, and this game also didn't end until 1 a.m. That's absolutely insane. Like I said, this game went until 1 a.m. Absolutely insane, but the game ended on a Jalen Tolbert game-winning touchdown on 4 Fourth and goal with 25 seconds left, and there was just so many things observed in this game, like Jalen Tolbert getting the game-winning touchdown, and also Dak Prescott became the first NFL player to throw for two different touchdowns during the same game on different days and interceptions as well, but we don't talk about that part. We talk about the touchdowns. Absolutely insane stuff from this game. This is honestly an all-time classic. Also, I don't want to give up, you know, any wishful thinking or anything, but this could be a game that kind of, not maybe turn around our season, but give us some momentum. Now, two big problems for the NFL over the last few seasons is bad offensive play and the lack of superstar games on Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime, man. In 2024, that was looking to be even more true. But on Thursday Night Football, we got a rarity as the Falcons beat the Buccaneers 36-30 and maybe the best game so far this year. I think it was. And Kirk Cousins, he's been in the league since 2012 and he had a career day. 509 passing yards, 4 touchdowns, 1 interception. And the game ended on a Kadero Hodge. I don't know how to say his name, but Kadero Hodge. I think that's how you say Kadero Hodge. And a game-winning touchdown. And really no one knew who this guy was entering the game and it was one of the I think I think it's been it was the best game so far this season and it was the best moment so far of this season but like I said no one really knew who Kadero Hodge was going into the game and he had the game winning touchdown and it wasn't just like a you know a simple slant route or anything that was to the end zone it was a 45 yard touchdown where he made a defender miss once he caught it and it, it was one of the it was one of the cooler moments that honestly I've seen while I've been watching football if you were watching the game, you saw the post-game interview and you saw all the teammates celebrating with him. It was a very special moment. One takeaway I do want to make, well, actually two. I was not expecting Darnell Mooney and Ray Ray McLeod to have pretty good seasons so far. I mean, Darnell Mooney's on pace to have a pretty good season. He's 14th in receiving yards and 6th in passing or receiving touchdowns. I was not expecting this at all. My last big takeaway from this game is how the Saints have just completely fallen off after the Cowboys game and how bad the Panthers are and how good the Falcons and Bucks have looked this year. It's going to be up to them. It's their division to lose. It, it might even come down. I don't know if they play in week 18, but if they do, it's going to come down to the last game possibly. The first game from the early Sunday games I want to go over is the Commanders absolutely destroying the Browns 34-13. And there's two main takeaways. One, the Browns absolutely suck. They need to get rid of Deshaun Watson right now, or at least bench him. I mean, they have Jameis Winston on that team. I, it doesn't make sense why he's just sitting there doing nothing. And also, the Commanders with Jaden Daniels, are they're, they're really good. If you've been watching this video, you know I'm a Cowboys fan, and obviously I don't want to see any of my divisional opponents do well, but with a team that has struggled so long in the Commanders and seeing a guy like Jaden Daniels who's a good player and a good dude, lead a team that has been so bad for so long to maybe possible success i mean they have a 4-1 start to the first five games and they honestly look like one of the better teams in the nfl it is kind of cool to see and while i think jane daniels has been far and away the best rookie quarterback so far this year it's pretty insane the comeback that caleb williams and bo Nix has made if you remember the first two games of the season they were not performing well at all and if you hear noise in the background that's cars three but Anyway, it was not looking good for Caleb Williams and Bonex in the first two games. And I said, hey, they're rookies. It's the first two games. Stuff's going to happen like that. And in the last three games, they have been absolutely popping off. And that leads us to our next game, the Panthers versus Bears. And the Bears destroyed the Panthers 36-10. And this, these teams are forever going to be linked with that terrible trade where the Panthers essentially got Bryce Young and gave up Caleb Williams, DJ Moore, Tyreek Stevenson, among others, and this was a huge and phenomenal revenge game for DJ Moore as he had 105 yards, 5 receptions, and 2 touchdowns against his former team, and 
he'd been pretty quiet so far up to this point and this was his first game where he made a lot of noise and showed how good he really was and also and Caleb Williams went off as well and it's expected when it's against the Panthers but I had him starting because I have Jalen Hurts on a bye in my fantasy football league and he was a huge part into my win he got me 29 points so thank you Caleb Williams and also we have the same first name so that's pretty cool as well and that's another reason why I'm, I'm rooting for him the other game that featured a rookie quarterback the Broncos versus Raiders the Broncos beat the Raiders 34-18 and Bonex now looks even better as he has led the Broncos to now a 3-2 record as they've won three straight in a row and the most notable part about this game was the fact that we had something that hadn't been done in over two decades a white player a white cornerback for that matter getting an interception yeah Riley Moss is currently breaking the color barrier as he became the first white cornerback to have an interception in over two decades since I think his name is Jason Seaborn Seahorn my bad if I say that wrong but yeah Riley Moss way to go and I do want to say I was critical of the Bo Nix pick at the time I thought they should have waited one more year for a guy and not draft a guy who had maybe possibly peaked in college and was 24 years old I didn't like that pick at the time but it is looking a lot better now and honestly I think Sean Payton is building something really special there in the Mile High City I mean we saw what he did with Drew Brees you know in New Orleans and maybe getting rid of Russell Wilson I was even critical of that getting rid of Russell Wilson was a bad idea in my opinion at, at the time but now with all the knowledge I think it might have been the best move as I think you can do something really special with Bo Nix. And let's not forget to mention that the Patriots are starting Drake May next week. And that makes four of the five rookie quarterbacks now their starting quarterback of their respective teams. And I just hope that the Patriots don't make this dude become a bust because he's got all the intangibles and the skill set to be a really good football player, a really good quarterback. But he has nothing around him. He has no weapons whatsoever. The Patriots honestly might be the worst roster in the NFL and it sucks to see for Drake May at least I mean as a Patriots I mean Patriots hater you saw Tom Brady all those years you can't really feel bad but for a guy like Drake May you can feel bad a little bit I mean he's a good dude and all that but uh, like, like I said please just don't make this dude a bust the other first round quarterback from 2024 Michael Penix is still sitting on the bench in Atlanta but it's not a bad thing right now as the Falcons are doing really good at a 3 2 record and look like one of the better teams in the NFC. And that's in large part due to Kirk Cousins going over there. And even though I was highly critical of the pick at the time, and honestly, I still kind of am, I don't know why you'd reach that far into the drafts and draft a very old quarterback. I'm liking the pick more and more as each day goes by. And my dad, who's a Falcons fan, agrees with this. Honestly, it might not be a bad pick at the end of, you know, his career. I mean, you're sitting behind a guy like Kirk Cousins and you got all those weapons like Drake London, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson. If they stay along, Michael Penix could turn out to be a very good quarterback. This is the last thing I'm going to be talking about in this video. And it also has to do with rookie quarterbacks. Even though he wasn't drafted in the first round, Spencer Rattler is going to be making his first career start against the Buccaneers on Sunday, and this comes after Derek Carr got injured. Man, I'm going to talk about the Saints real quick. They lost this week against the Chiefs. They're now 2-3. They've dropped three straight. Their offense has looked terrible ever since that Week 2 game against the Cowboys. I mean, I know Derek Carr can't help the fact he got hurt, but man, what a falloff. You know, like in Week 2, they looked like the best offense in the NFL. Derek Carr looked like an MVP candidate, and now... We are stuck. The Saints are stuck with Spencer Rattler. Did I say Spencer Strider earlier? I didn't mean to. I meant to say Spencer Rattler. But yeah, uh, not good for the Saints at all. I mean, hopefully things go with, with uh, Spencer Rattler. But with the things, with the way things have been going, I I don't see too much hope. All right, well that's the end of this video. Bye.